In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves today to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you send the Holy Spirit to be our advocate and guide. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to bring peace to a world marred by sin. Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to guide us to eternal life with you. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
us pray. Graciously pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, O Lord, that walking in oneness of faith and strengthened by the power of his love, we may come to the measure of the full stature of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind. And it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to obey. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement. They were asked, and not all of these people who were speaking Galileans, then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Amphithia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and convert, converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take away their breath, they perish, every tomb. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them and everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we are all given to drink of one Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, may the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, that you may worthily proclaim this holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. be with you and with your spirit reading from the Holy Gospel according to John glory to you Lord Jesus said to his disciples whoever loves me will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him whoever does not love me does not keep my words yet the word you hear is not mine but that of the father who sent me I have told you this while I am with you the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. I invite the following candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation to please stand as their name is called. Miguel Capellan, Gianna Corrado, Navia Delman, Joseph Gianetta, Mia Kramer, Gary Rentz, Jason Salio, Xavier Tavares, Ella Thuringer. Reverend Father, these candidates have carefully prepared for this day under the guidance of their parents and our teachers of Christian doctrine. And through the delegation of our Bishop, the Most Reverend Joseph C. Bambara, they seek full incorporation into the body of Christ at your hands. It is my pleasure now to present them to you. I assure you they are well prepared and ready to receive the sacrament of confirmation. We pray that these candidates of all of us will be faithful to the gospel by spreading and defending the Catholic faith both by word and by lives of service as true witnesses of Jesus Christ. Candidates, please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it's been a long time in coming, hasn't it? 
We were supposed to be doing this back in April or May. But finally, in mid-September, here we are, uh, the day of your confirmation and probably what should be one of the most important days of your life. I can remember many, 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 many years ago up at Holy Rosary Church on Poplar Street, the day of my first, my, my confirmation. And I think of the, that whole day, the worst part of the day was right now. Because I knew at that point Bishop Hannon was going to ask me questions. And now it's my turn to ask you those questions. But as I promised you last week, I, I know that it's been quite a while. And I know that maybe you became a little bit rusty. And uh, I'm, I'm going to try to stick to some easy questions before just saying a few words about the Sacrament of Confirmation itself. I guess it would be fair to ask you, if, since we're here to receive a sacrament, who can tell me what a sacrament is? You're going to have to do me a favor. Could you stand up and just pull your mask down a little bit and talk nice and loud like you would do outside? Very, very, very good. The sacrament is an outward sign given to us by Christ to give grace. So in other words, I'm going the, the sacrament that you're going to receive today, there's going to be a certain sign and there are, there's going to be a certain grace that's given to you. What sacrament, or who could define for me, is a better way to put it, who could define for me what, is, what the Sacrament of Confirmation is? What is Confirmation? Who wants to take a guess at it? First of all, Very good. The, sac the Sacrament of Confirmation is a sacrament in which the Holy Spirit comes to us in a special way to make us strong and perfect Christians and witnesses of Jesus Christ. Sorry I missed your hand. I must be not only going deaf, but probably blind too. That's what happens when you get old guys, you know? Okay. Confirmation is a sacrament. We know what a sacrament is, don't we? In which the Holy Spirit comes to us in a special way to make us strong and perfect Christians and witnesses of Jesus Christ. How am I going to confirm you today? What am I going to do to impart to you the Holy Spirit in this special way. First of all, I'm going to do something with my hands. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to impose my hands and at the same time say a prayer, an ancient prayer, calling down the Holy Spirit upon you. That imposition of hands, that placing of hands is a very old sign in the church. And any time somebody would receive a special task to do, the priest or the bishop would impose hands on them, calling down the Holy Spirit. For instance, when I was a priest, when I was ordained a deacon, 
and Deacon Lenny and Deacon Bob were ordained deacons, the bishop imposed his hands on our heads. A bishop is ordained a bishop by three bishops imposing hands upon his head. That's an ancient sign of the calling down of the Holy Spirit. Second of all, I'm going to anoint you with something. I'm going to anoint you with holy oil. Does anybody know what the name of the oil is that um, I'm going to confirm you with? Holy chrism. And uh, that's a special oil, okay? And it's, you'll, you'll know it's special because you're probably going to go out of here smelling like perfume, okay? Because it's a mixture of olive oil and something which we call balm. It's a perfume. It's put in the oil to say that this oil is special, that it's special because it takes its name from Christ. Christ anoints you to go forth and to proclaim his word and his faith. And that calling down of the Spirit, that anointing with oil, enables you, as I said, to become those witnesses. You know, to be witnesses of Christ, not only today, but well into the future. I'd like to tell you a bit of a story. And it kind of takes place in a large city. It concerns an old man who constantly would preach on a street corner in that large city. He would preach against everything. Preach against the evils of war, violence, poverty, social injustice, and man's inhumanity toward his fellow man. And one day, a young boy, probably about your ages, went up to him. And he said, you stupid and you foolish old man, you always are preaching out against all the problems in the world. Don't you understand and don't you realize that nobody really listens to you? Look around you, he said. There are many more wars, many more injustices, bitter hatred, mounting violence, and extreme poverty. He said, you stupid and foolish old man, the only thing that is happening is people are laughing at you behind your back. And after a very long period of deafening silence, the old man spoke up. Young man, he said, when I was younger, like you, I realized and I really thought that I had a chance to change the world. But now I know I can't. But I still speak out against war and violence and poverty and social injustice. Not that I may change the world, but that the world will never change me. You know, we gather here this afternoon in this church to celebrate the Sacrament of Confirmation. And as you're going to come to find out, there are certain, certain realities in life that we can change. 
But the one thing that we can really do is to allow the world not to change our values and what we stand for. And I think that's the very heart, guys, of what confirmation is all about. It's God giving you and I strength so that the world will never change us and that we will have the courage and the strength to live the values of our faith, to live the gospel of Jesus Christ every moment of our daily lives. And you know, if you don't know it by now, you're going to soon come to know it. It's not always easy to be that faithful Christian that Jesus calls us to be in baptism. In a real sense, we need all the help and all the strength that we can get. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. He gives us the strength to fight against the evils in society and to stay that faithful Christian that we were called to be on the day of our baptism. Now, you might sit here today and you might kind of think, you know, I'm only in ninth or tenth grade and, you know, what does all that have to do with me? Some years ago, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, was in Krakow, Poland, actually the birthplace of St. John Paul II. And he was at a youth rally with guys and girls just your age, probably, maybe a little older. And at the conclusion of his homily, this is what he said to that gathering. We are on a journey. Keep walking. Keep living the faith and sharing it. And don't forget, you're not the church of tomorrow. You are not the church of the meantime. You are the church now. You see, boys and girls, our life is a journey. It's a journey to God. And someday you'll be in the pews with all these adults, or where all these adults are sitting. But that's not when you become the church. You are the church today. Your peers, your family, your friends. They see the church, they see Christ lived in your life. May we pray today, on the day of your confirmation, that you may always witness to Christ and his church faithfully, so that through your actions, through your living, people may come to know of Christ today because you are the church. May God bless you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, before you receive the Holy Spirit in the Sacrament of Confirmation, recall to mind the faith 
which you professed in baptism, or which your parents and godparents in your name professed with the church. And so, candidates of confirmation, I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated now at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Confirmation class, please rise. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord, amen. First of all, you did a very good job on that reading. Thank you. You learned all those words. What name have you chosen now for the Sacrament of Confirmation? Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Did as 
very good job on that reading too. Very good, thank you. What name have you chosen for the Sacrament of Confirmation? Grace, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And what name have you chosen for confirmation? Rose. Rose. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. What name have you chosen for confirmation? Anthony. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And what name have you chosen for confirmation? Francis. Francis, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. What name have you chosen today for confirmation? Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And what name have you chosen today for confirmation? Francis Xavier. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be, peace be with you. What name have you chosen today for confirmation? Nicole. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. You were the one answering all the questions. Did a good job, thank you. And what name have you chosen for confirmation? Seraphina. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit.
With confidence and faith now, let us entrust our prayers and our needs to God, our Heavenly Father. For the following intercessions, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Bishop Joseph Bambera, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and religious of the Diocese of Scranton, that they may be effective and tireless teachers of the good news of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this confirmation class, that by their word and example, they may support and encourage others to follow Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parents, godparents, and sponsors, that God will bless them abundantly for the faith they have shared with them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, that God's spirit of understanding, charity, and peace may dwell in all human hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and the recovering, the dying, that the spirit of love may be present to them, in our compassionate care and support, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, that they may live forever in the light of God's peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now for those prayers that are silent in your hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place our prayers and our needs before you today with great confidence. We know that you will hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept graciously your servants, O Lord, together with your only begotten Son, so that signed with his cross, and with a special anointing, they may constantly offer themselves to you in union with him and merit each day a greater outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his, of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, 
we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom you have been pleased to confirm today by, the bestowing, by bestowing the Holy Spirit and keep them always in your grace. Remember also our brothers and sisters, the fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O Lord, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is forever and Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. bring us to everlasting life. For the reception of Holy Communion with all of the uh, protocols uh, for COVID-19, I will distribute communion to the confirmation class and their sponsors in the center aisle. You're asked to come go from the first pew to the last pew of candidates um, and form one aisle according to the distancing that is marked there. After I have concluded with the class, Deacon Lenny and myself will position ourselves at this, the middle side aisles and we would ask that you form one line beginning with the first pew, moving to the back, and returning to your pew by way of the middle aisle. The body and blood of Christ. Amen. The body and blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Instruct, O Lord, with the fullness of the law, those you have endowed with the gifts of your Holy Spirit and nourished by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, that they may constantly show to the world the freedom of your adopted children and, by the holiness of their lives, exercise the prophetic mission of your people. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I'm not going to talk again. Okay, once was enough. Um, I would like to just take this opportunity uh, to present to our confirmation class their certificates for confirmation. And before I do that, I would like to extend my gratitude to Bill and Kathy Getz for their hard work all the way through to the sudden ending of the academic year. I thank them for their help uh, in preparing our students for uh, receiving the gift of confirmation today. And boys and girls, I would somehow be remiss if I didn't congratulate every one of you. As I said a long time ago uh, during Mass, it's a special day for you. And uh, I hope always that you remember the day of your confirmation, especially in those difficult times when it's so hard to be a follower of Christ. You know, always remember the special grace you received today and the gift of the, the, that the Holy Spirit gives you to live your life faithfully uh, throughout the journey of your life. For those of you who would wish uh, their will in the not too distant future, I hope, be a copy of today's celebration that you would be able to purchase through the parish office. I believe that you received um, papers on that uh, as you came to church today. Uh, you could simply call the office and uh, orders would be taken from there. So I'd ask Mr. Getz to please help me. I can shake your hands, but I at least can, can, uh, can, can congratulate you. Miguel, congratulations. Nice job. Kiana? Kiana, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Nivea? Nivea, congratulations to you. God bless you. Joseph? Well, congratulations to you. Thank you. Mia. Mia, congratulations to you. Garrett. Gary, congratulations. Jason. Jason, congratulations. Thank you. Xavier? Xavier, congratulations to you. And Ellen? Ellen, congratulations to you. Watch your step there now. Suppose we congratulate them.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.